Hey guys, so you're wanting to get above 1000 rating points and beyond, so here's a lesson to help you do that. So um, I just played a short game, it's a 20 minute rapid game, and my opponent's rated about 850. So this is the kind of player that you're going to have to be able to beat on a regular basis in order to get above 1000, right? So I start with the white pieces. So what I'm going to do in this game is I'm going to introduce to you the concept of tactical thinking and basic chess tactics, right? Because if you get your head into thinking tactically, then that will take you a long way. It will take you beyond the beginner kind of phase. You don't need to think quite so much about strategy, about attacking plans and all those kinds of things. And you certainly don't need to remember a whole load of opening theory because most chess games are won and lost on tactics. So what are tactics? Tactics are concepts and ideas that can help you to uh, force your opponent to do something that they don't want to do or in some way to get an advantage in the game. That's really as simple as it is, right? So let me take you through. Okay, so I start with e4, my opponent replies e5, knight to f3. Okay, so far so good. So at the beginning of the game, my ideas are I want to control squares on the board. Right, so bringing my pawn out controls these two squares. My knight now controls uh, all of these squares, right? Knights like to be, this is something to think about, okay? Knights like to be in the center of the board, in these squares. And the reason is because knights can move to a maximum of eight other squares. Now, if you think about it, if the knight is outside of this central 4x4 four four square, then th these squares, uh, these edge ones, say if this knight was here on g2, these edge ones, which is half of the squares that the knight could potentially control, would be off the board. Right, so as long as a knight is in this central four by four within the within the board, it's controlling a maximum of eight squares on the board. Okay. In addition, bringing this knight out attacks this pawn. So what that does is it makes my opponent have to respond. Okay, and that's a key tactical idea. Right. So uh, my opponent does not uh, try to defend the pawn but instead plays uh, d5. And I capture the piece, thinking that if his queen recaptures, then I can bring my knight out to c3 and kick the queen, right? Now, again, that is a very basic tactical idea. Attacking one of your opponent's pieces is a tactic, and if you are attacking a uh, a high-value piece like a queen with a lower-value piece like a knight, then uh, that queen is going to have to do something or else your opponent could lose, or you could lose uh, significant material. Um, queen doesn't recapture, instead my opponent plays knight to f6, and then I jump in and grab the loose pawn. I figure, why not, you know? Uh, yes, my opponent could attack my knight in various ways, but in any case, I can always bring my knight straight back to f3. So I've just grabbed my second pawn, I'm now two pawns up in the game. My opponent does play the queen there, and instead of simply retreating the knight, I decide to implement another tactic. Now what this is, is, well, two things really. I mean, one is I'm defending the knight, okay, um, which is an alternative to moving it out of the way. And I, I can see that this queen can't capture anything significant without being taken itself. So all of these pawns and everything are safe right now. The other tactic that I'm lining up, as you probably can see, is that the queen is now in line with the enemy king. There are no pawns in the way because the e-file is completely open. And what that means is that on my next go, I could move this knight anywhere and put my opponent in check. Now, when your opponent is in check, that comes into a category of what we call forcing moves. It's an absolutely forcing move. 
means that my opponent must get out of check on his next turn. All right, it's as simple as that. And when your opponent is forced to do something, it means that uh, that leaves scope for me to do some other things. So in this case, my, my opponent just plays c6. And I actually play a, a poor move here. I play my knight to g4, thinking that I can attack his knight. Right? A better move would have been knight to g6. Okay, because this comes with check. Right, so the uh, so what happens then is that either my opponent must block the check, so he could put bishop there, could put bishop there, could put queen in the way potentially, right? Um, or he has to move his king out of the line of check, so he would have to move his king off the e file. Uh, I play knight to g4. My opponent has to respond and blocks with the knight. Now, what I didn't realise here, because I was, it was early in the morning, I've not had enough coffee, is that my my knight there is actually in line with the bishop. He couldn't take the bishop on, on this go, sorry, the bishop couldn't take my knight on this go because he's in check and he's got to do something about the check. Okay, so he moves his knight over there. I decide to attack the knight. Now this is again another tactic and I'm going to be uh, producing a course completely about tactics for beginners. So what this is, is attacking the pinned piece. The knight is pinned. If, you go, if we go back actually, the knight pins itself against the, against the king. So what that means is that this knight now cannot legally move as long as my queen is there. Okay, because if this knight were to move anywhere else, it would be putting the black king in check and you're not allowed to do that, it's illegal, right? So what you can do in this situation is attack the pinned piece. This knight cannot move, so when I attack that knight with my pawn, the knight cannot escape because it's pinned and it's an absolute pin. It cannot legally move. Now my opponent comes in and grabs the bishop. Now I could have um, recaptured the bishop with my queen at that point. Uh, instead, this is another tactic. It's a fork. This is a pawn fork. Every piece on the board is capable of forking um, your opponent's pieces. And a fork simply means that you are attacking two or more pieces at the same time with the same piece. Okay, so now this bishop has to do something. It has to move or whatever. I think the best move would probably be h5 because then this pawn cannot capture the knight, although the d-pawn can. Okay, so he moves back to e4, which is a, an error because it allows f takes e4, and what have we got? Another fork. Okay, so this bishop's moved from one fork situation into another one. So the queen is going to have to do something. Queen is a valuable piece. Okay, in this instance, the bishop captures. I recapture with the pawn. If I'd have recaptured with the queen, then uh, black would have been in check and I'm attacking the queen as well and that would have forced my opponent to exchange queens. Now material at this point is is equal although if I capture the bishop I'd be a bishop in front um, but I decided not to exchange queens at this point. I capture and attack the queen. Here's another tactic right. Um, <clears throat> I mean bringing this this dark square bishop out to b4 is is okay it's, it's developing a piece and it's clearing this space so that my opponent could uh, hopefully castle his king, get his king to safety at some point. However, it's not a very good move because of my next move. C3 easily gets out of the check and now what we've got is we've got a double attack. I've got two pieces being attacked by two pawns. So something's going to have to move. The queen moves out of the way and I figure this is a, an exchange that's in my favour. I capture the queen, black is forced to recapture, and then I get the bishop. So now I'm actually two minor pieces up in this game. And the rest of the game is pretty much a formality. So uh, black here has got an undefended piece. So the undefended pieces on the board, uh, including the rooks because they're not connected, these are all the undefended pieces on the board. So what should black be doing? Maybe 
push H6 to create a nice solid pawn structure there. Um, castling is also an, an idea. He decides to move that out and now here's the thing. So this knight is attacking that pawn, right? But as another tactic, bishop takes and now the knight is pinned. It's pinned itself, well I've pinned it by moving the bishop out, so now the knight cannot capture this loose pawn. King moves, uh, I decide to come in with my knight. This pawn is still undefended, but the knight is still pinned because the king decided to move along that same diagonal. Okay, so the knight cannot legally move. So I decide to bring my other piece out into the game. This knight is defending the pawn on e4. So I'm unconcerned. This rook comes along. It's attacking this pawn, but it doesn't matter because my knight's defending it. And then I can proceed to castle. This puts my, my rook on this nice f-file, which is semi-open, and I'm looking at one of the undefended pawns. King moves out of the way. Bishop comes in with another check. King moves back. And now my knight comes in with a check, and I'm looking at this tasty c7 square now. Because from the c7 square, I notice that because the rooks are one, two, three, four, five squares apart, then a knight going here can attack both, right? So what black should play now is, I think, king to d7, where it's guarding this square. He doesn't do that. I come in with the fork. I'm now going to win at least the exchange, which means I'm um, winning a rook in return for a minor piece. Rook comes along, captures, captures, and now my bishop dives in to f7. So I've got two pieces looking at f7, and f7 is currently undefended. So I have a choice I could have taken with a rook and maybe attack these other pawns here, or I could attack with capture with the bishop and attack the rook. Okay, so I've got a minor piece attacking a rook, which again is pretty much a forcing move. It's going to make my opponent have to respond. And then I come in with a check, right? Um, <clears throat> the rook being there doesn't worry me because my bishop is defended. But coming in with this check, it does break that defense of the bishop, so I need to be careful about that. Now, this is a kind of trap as well. Now, the king can't capture the bishop because it's defended by the rook. Um, but if the king captures the pawn there, I've, I can move either of my rooks to e1. Okay, and then we've got another tactic, which is the skewer. So that's when a high value piece is in front of a lower value piece that's less defended. So um, that, that would have forced an exchange of rooks. Okay, so what does my opponent do? He doesn't capture the poisoned pawn, but instead moves towards my bishop. And now I counterattack. Okay, if you look at this, the king has now moved in line with my rook. Okay, so I can go and attack. I can move the piece that's in the middle with a discovered check on the king. The king has to respond. And now I've got, I can absolutely on my next turn um, capture that rook. Right, so I think at this point, yeah, my opponent resigns. He's too far down in material. Um, he's down a rook, a minor piece, and two pawns as well. So you can see here, um, you can beat lower rated players with ease when you're thinking in terms of tactics. Okay, so you need to constantly, when you're playing, be looking for tactics like pins and forks and forcing moves and checks and, and things like that, okay? Um, get into the tactical mindset, and it's not only your ideas of how you can gain an advantage over your opponent, but you want to prevent your opponent from gaining an advantage over you in exactly the same way. So um, that's, that's what I want you to be thinking about. Think tactically on every move. Think what's possible here. Um, where could there be discovered attacks, discovered checks, potential pins, things like that, skewers, right? So that's that's really all you need to do to climb to a thousand and beyond, right? Always take care of your own safety. Don't think only about your attacks. Um, and start. That's it. Tactics, tactics, tactics. It's said that chess is ninety-nine percent tactics until you get to the master level. 
And I think there's an awful lot of truth in that. The, the only difference becomes that the tactics become more complex, more kind of sequential um, as you climb up the ratings. But uh, that's basically it. That's what you need to do to win, guys. See you next time.